near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. This is Mr. Chris Claremont. A legend. Melanie goes, eat some Hey, hey, y'all, you minties. Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for my advanced look at the Captain America, the Trial of Captain America Omnibus. This is the new printing. So, let's go ahead and get started. Now, before going... Any further, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on October 10th or 11th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. This is the one that's drawn by Steve McNiven. On the left-hand side is my original printing, but this is the standard edition cover. This is the same design they're using for the new printing, and this is by Marco Djurjevic. So, let's see here. Captain America, The Trial of Captain America, Brubaker, Geis, Ross, Eagle Sam, Brightweiser, McNiven, and Davis. So, that all the credits are still the same. And here are the spines together. Captain America, The Trial of Captain America. Looks about the same kind of font that they're using on both of these. Uh, but keep in mind, this is the original printing. And honestly, they look about the same thickness. We'll do a comparison internally here in a little bit. Then you have the two different pictures, and then, of course, the creators here, and the back even looking identical with this picture by Steve McNiven, where <laughs> Captain America is getting knocked out. I love that picture. Uh, I always thought this might have been Mark Grunewald. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be or not, but here's what's collected, The Fall and Rise of Captain America, ISBN, looking a little bit smaller right there, but the biggest thing that they've added to these, and I've talked about it on my Captain America Lives Omnibus, is this right here, Volume 4 of Captain America by Ed Brubaker. That is not found anywhere on the original printing. So that's something that they're using for people to help them put these in chronological order on their bookshelves. And it's something that they just now started. You know, now that I'm looking at it, this new printing looks a little fatter. Uh, yeah, we'll look at the inside and the build in a little bit. The price is $100 on the new printing. The original printing is $99.99. So it's gone up a penny. Inflation. What can I say? Let's look at the flaps here. Steve Rogers is back. And then the creators here on the right-hand side. And there's a lot of creators because this is a big book. Now, the original design had this underneath it. Actually, that's really cool. It's what kids these days are calling basic. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what kids these days are calling anything anymore. And that's the design of the original. This is the design of the new printing. That is, I got to say, that's really badass. So we're going to crack this book open and talk about the stories collected in here. And so just in case, though, we are talking about a volume four of a series from Ed Brubaker's run. So just in case some minor spoilers going in or, uh, you know what? No, 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 not even minor. I have to talk about what happened previously in the first three volumes. So spoilers, nonetheless, I don't want to ruin this for anybody for going into this for the first time. But spoilers for what happened previously and what sets this book up. Uh, by the way, this one is printed at the Donley printer, the first printing, and the new printing is in, at the Mega Print in Istanbul, Turkey. All right, let's crack it open. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this omnibus open. We have some crimson red end sheets there. Captain America, the trial of Captain America. And here you have your credits. So writer Ed Brubaker, although other writers help out uh, throughout this particular book. So it's not just really Ed Brubaker. There's other writers that come in here and help out through Captain America 616, uh, like Colin Bunn and Mike Benson and Howard Chaikin, Frank Terry, Kyle Higgins, and Alex Siegel, just to name a few of the writers. But here is your list of artists too, like Butch Geis and Luke Ross doing a majority of this book. You also have people like Del Eaglesham. You have people like Mitch Brettweiser. Uh, you have people like Steve McNiven and Alan Davis. 
this kind of gives you a recap of what happened previously since the days of Civil War. So let's talk about what is collected in here first. This book collects Captain America, Who Will Wield the Shield? Captain America, the 2005 relaunch that Ed Brubaker started, but it went back to the legacy number. So 602 to 619, issue 615.1, Steve Rogers' Super Soldier, the four-issue miniseries, and then Captain America, the relaunch, issues 1 through 10, and that is the 2011 relaunch. And this is a time when Marvel was relaunching books. The book has 928 pages. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's $100. Now we need to talk about the type of stories you're going to find in here. So again, just a little bit of spoilers as to what's happened previously that led to this. So in the previous volumes, Ed Brubaker has been building up pretty much the character of Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, return back from the dead. Yes, all those years ago, we used to say, that dude is Bucky dead. That no longer is the case. And of course, a lot of this was borrowed for the Winter Soldier movie, and then eventually Civil War. Now, when he comes back, he turns out to be an assassin for Russia. They had just pretty much wiped his brain clean and made him into the ultimate killing machine. Then, of course, because Captain America saves him and they were friends, he's able to get him back. In the Omnibus Volume 2 called The Death of Captain America, you guessed it. You can find out for yourself how he gets killed. And in Captain America Lives, you can find out how he comes back from the death. This right here kicks off with who will wield the shield. Now that Steve Rogers is back... Who's going to be wearing the cowl of Captain America? Because while Steve Rogers was dead, Bucky Barnes, fully restored back to his normal self, was the new Captain America. And of course, he's the one with the costume that was redesigned by the legendary Alex Ross. He's got a gun, he's got a shield, and he's got this very, you know, it's an homage to Captain America's costume. Uh, but... That's uh, that's pretty much what Who Will Will the Shield is. Now that Steve Rogers is back, Bucky Barnes is like, I don't need to be Captain America anymore. You're Captain America. People want to see you as Captain America. At the end of the day, Steve Rogers decides, you know what? I don't want to be Captain America. Why don't you keep wearing the cow? Why don't you keep the shield? I'm going to go do something a little bit different. So Steve Rogers decides to become kind of like the ultimate cop. He decides to become the super soldier. He ends up pretty much uh, taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and just going around and stopping crime on a different type of level. So that's what's going on with Captain America Steve Rogers. Now, you might also be confused when you get to the very next issue and we meet William Burnside. Now, he was a little bit of a retcon that happened in the 70s because this was a character that played the character of Captain America in the 50s. It wasn't Steve Rogers, but in 1950s, like there were some issues of Captain America that came out later on. It was retconned that he wasn't all there, and that's pretty much what this particular story is about. Kind of wrapping up that storyline from the previous omnibus. But the big story that happens through here is that of the trial of Captain America. Because... Bucky Barnes was an assassin for Russia. So he's had all these decades that he needs to be held accountable for. And how, do, how does like the nation hear about this? Well, it's none other than people like the Red Skull or Sin or Baron Zemo. Everyone is behind destroying Bucky for his past. And his past is coming back to haunt him. And... This is pretty much the master plan to destroy Bucky Barnes as Captain America. So they let it out to news outlets. People are reporting. So, like I said, he needs to be held accountable for his past mistakes. Even though he wasn't in charge of his body, someone else was controlling him. So this is where it becomes really interesting as what exactly can someone be held accountable for if they don't have a memory of that particular life? We start getting a more bigger supporting cast of... Like, not, not just Sharon Carter, but Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff shows up. You have the Falcon showing up through these pages. And it just becomes a much bigger book. And yes, it all comes to, to play in this particular storyline, The Trial of Captain America. And you can find out exactly what ends up happening to the character of James Bucky Barnes here. 
Then we have Steve Rogers Super Soldier. So we we have this particular miniseries right here, having Steve Rogers fight off against other types of super soldiers, and then him having to deal um, with some of his issues. And we've seen these kind of things before, where he's reverting back to uh, pre. Super Soldier Serum, Steve Rogers, Machine Smith right there plays a big part of this little mini-series. And then we go back to what's going on in the life of Bucky Barnes and how all the superheroes are pretty much meeting. And Hawkeye's the one that's like, how did we let this happen? How can you let this guy that was wanted, you know, not be atoned for his sins? And Steve explains, you know, he's a friend and he was brainwashed. You have to understand. And Natasha brings up a good point. She's like... She brings up the point that both Hawkeye and Black Widow were villains to begin with, so they have no room to talk. Now, after issue 619 is where things get really interesting, but I do have to point this out. This is one of my favorite issues, though. So in issue 616, you get it split up into a couple of parts. You got different artists that help out, like this is Travis Charay doing a page. You have some classic artists coming back. This is Ed uh, McGinnis helping out Ed Brubaker uh, to kind of flesh out some of these characters that have been playing a big part in this uh you get issue 617 here and then you get the rest of 616 after the big wrap up in 619 which i know it makes no sense but for the sake of reading orders it kind of makes sense how they split the stories up something that happened in the past and then some things that are happening in present time so after issue 619 uh, if you're looking for a reading order, you stop there and you go and read Fear Itself because something big happens in Fear Itself. And I'm not going to spoil what happens or how it happens. All I will say is that in that particular crossover, the character of the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, is uh, he is no longer being Captain America. I and mean, I'll just leave it at that. He is no longer Captain America. And people don't really know a reason why he's not Captain America. There's a secret, and it's all revealed in the next omnibus. Uh, there's a funeral opening here in the pages of Captain America number one, the relaunch, and it's got beautiful artwork by Steve McNiven for the first few issues, but Steve McNiven is also a pretty slow artist, so he couldn't keep up with the demand of the schedule of a monthly issue, so eventually Alan Davis ends up taking over the book, Giuseppe Coley doing some fill-in art too. But the first five issues are a lot of Steve McNiven's artwork, where we're introduced to a couple of villains, Bravo and, um, what's her name, Queen Bee. Um, and then that leads into Steve Rogers now wearing the costume of Captain America, because like I said, in Fear Itself, uh, something happens to Bucky Barnes that enables him to wear the costume again. And don't worry, there's a reason why the next Omnibus has the return of... Well, you can find out for yourself i'm not spoiling that in case you're reading these for the first time here's some beautiful alan davis artwork and we're getting back to like some classic captain america villains through these pages now all the way in the back you have the variant covers and we'll do a comparison here in a little bit and these are different variants like you have the deadpool variant back here you have the captain america i am captain america variant i think that was to promote the movie this is the vampire variant. This might have been around the time when Dracula was playing a big part with the X-Men. Uh, what was his name? Victor Gelsher, I think, was the writer at that time during that X-Men series with the vampires. Fan Expo variant, the Venom variant. So there's a lot of variants back here. Red, White, and Brew. These are interviews with Ed Brubaker right here talking about his story that he's been building since the return of the Winter Soldier. Or the Winter Soldier, rather. And then some original artwork here by Butch Geis. And Mike Deodato. And Chris Samney. And then your end sheets. Now, let's look at the binding of this book. 928 pages and sewn binding. This is what the eye looks like. Love seeing eyes like that. This one is printed at the Mega Printer in Turkey. Uh, the paper stock in this one is... Honestly, it's pretty thick, and I'll compare it to the original, because when I was doing them side-by-side -side on the spines of themselves, it felt like it was the original one was a little bit thinner. Um, there's very minor bleed-through coming from the opposite page, and I've been looking for it. Of course, it helps that a lot of the stories earlier on were told at nighttime, but even like on a white 
background like this, there's not a lot of bleed through coming from this opposite page here. Uh, let's see here, and I'm and I'm looking for it. Maybe maybe just a tad there. So we'll compare some of the pages together with the original one. So let's actually do that now. Okay, we have the original printing here, printed at the Donley printer in 2014, and the new printing right here, printed at the Mega printer in 2023. The red color pages are a lot. There's like a scarlet red, or no, crimson red, sorry. This is a lot brighter. The Trial of Captain America. And even the contents page looks different. Seems like they're using different fonts. These are a little bit, just a little bit bigger. But I figured the reason they moved these over is because there's all this wasted space. Even though there's wasted space up there. Who will wield the shield? Right here. And this is the way both of the books lay over. This one has been read quite a number of times. This one's had the spine stretched eh, twice. So the colors are a little more darker in the new printing. It's something I'm noticing right away. The feel of the paper stock. Oh, this feel, feels a little bit... Uh, this is tough. Sometimes I wish I get one of those paper <laughs> graders to see exactly how thick the pages are. Um, but honestly, feels about the same. Maybe, yeah, it does. It feels about the same as the original printing. But the biggest question is, if it feels about the same, why is it thicker? Well, that could be because of the binding. But my original one also has a very similar eye, like other Donley printers do. The biggest question is, what about the bleed through? Because I'm really not noticing any bleed through on either printing. Not in this page. Let's see here. There's a lot of whites over here. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Maybe, maybe just a... No, that's not bleed through. That's... I'm looking for something that I can compare it to. But honestly, the new printing doesn't really have that much bleed through. Maybe right here you can tell there's a frame on the... Op that's not even a freaking frame. Never mind. Um... Yeah, uh, and I, I'm serious. I'm looking because I know it bothers people when there is some. Okay, maybe right here is you're seeing a little bit of this. So right here and right here. it It's about the same, honestly. Yeah, a bleed through is about the same. So it's very minimal. Now the way the books lay over. Okay, so this is the way that they lay over on a spread page. And yeah, the gutter loss seems very similar. Very minimal. Like you can see, if you hold it down, sorry, uh, both strings right here. And if you hold this down, you can see both strings there. Maybe, maybe this is has a little bit more gutter loss than this. But, I mean, my gosh, that's just really nitpicking there. And, because you can see maybe the whole stick here, if you hold it down, whereas this, you really have to hold it down to see the whole stick. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's nitpicking. That's getting ridiculous. Um... Yeah, it it's, looks very similar in the way that it lays over. So that's a good thing. And again, this is the Mega Printer. And this is the Donley Printer from 2014. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, Emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Cheapgraphicnovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, build, and comparison of this Omni. Let me know in the comments down below 
if you missed out on it the first time around, if you are picking it up this time, going in completely blind, what other Captain America stories you would love to see collected in omnibus format, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, ring that bell for notifications, and subscribe if you haven't yet. We put out videos every day. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.